Welcome to the Structured Learning Environments and Highly Structured Classrooms eCourse for the Northeast Independent School District. In this presentation, you will learn the seven required components for these instructional settings. There will be a short quiz following the conclusion of this presentation. If you would like to follow along, please print out a copy of this PowerPoint presentation attached as a link to this eCourse in Edgeforia. You will be guided through what an SLE HSC classroom looks like, who qualifies for an SLE HSC classroom, and how the program operates. The purpose of an SLE HSC classroom is to provide specially designed instruction while increasing student use of positive behaviors. This will facilitate progress towards the least restrictive environment. Both SLE and HSC environments are designed for students whose IEP requires a high degree of structure and routine in order for them to be successful. Behavioral, academic, communication, and social skills instruction is delivered at a greater intensity than what is provided in a less restrictive environment. The following slides will show the criteria needed for students to qualify for these settings. Students in these settings exhibit significant challenges in the areas of communication, cognition, and behavior. In the area of behavior, the student exhibits significant dangerous behavior to self or others. The ARD committee has revised instructional and behavioral strategies at least once and shown evidence that these changes have been implemented with fidelity. Despite these efforts, data show that the student is not making reasonable progress. In order to consider placement of a student in SLE HSC, a functional behavior assessment must be conducted and a behavior intervention plan must be implemented for at least six weeks with data showing the student is not making reasonable progress. It is imperative that the special education teacher has collaborated with the speech language pathologist, behavior facilitator, administration, and program coordinator to monitor the student's progress. During this time period, the elementary and middle school student is receiving instruction in the most restrictive setting on their campus, and the high school student is receiving instruction in all self-contained classes. The student's transitions to other environments on the campus should be minimized as much as possible. The SLE and HSC environments include the highest level of structure available at NEISD. Structured teaching utilizes visual cues which help children with significant needs focused on the relevant information which can at times be difficult. Structured teaching addresses challenging behaviors in a proactive manner by creating appropriate and meaningful environments that reduce stress, anxiety, and frustration. The following website, www.txautism.net slash target, can be used as a resource for evidence-based interventions when working with students with autism. Please bookmark this website for future reference. The programs operate on the foundation of evidence-based practices for students with significant needs in seven key areas, including physical structure, schedules and work systems, social skills instruction, applied behavior analysis, effective teams, curriculum and instruction, and communication. The first component of an SLE HSC classroom is physical structure. Physical structure refers to the way the classroom is set up. Areas including work with teacher, small group instruction, independent work, break, and chill zone are clearly defined. Watch how this teacher sets up physical structure in the classroom. Hi, my name is Meg Bryson and I'm the SLE teacher at Redland Oaks Elementary. Um, I'm going to take you through a tour of what a typical structured learning environment should look like. So if you come over here, this is an individual station. It's a workstation. You can see the label um, with a work task system in place. There's some organization to easily um, feed the workstations. Here's another individual workstation. 
Um, this is a cool down area for students whose behavior has escalated to the point that it's unsafe. And here's another individual workstation. And then there's a teacher area over here, and you see the classroom schedule. So the teacher has access to change the classroom schedule while the students are responsible for changing their individual schedules. Um, you can see this is the work with teacher area. So any work that's not individual or independent um, is done here with teachers and assistants um, supporting the students and, um, and encouraging uh, participation and interaction with each other. And you can see these are the different um, labels for the individual work schedule, um, the individual schedules to come over and match to show what is happening over here. Um, here are the classroom expectations posted visually, um, and students also, um, teachers and assistants also have them on our flip cards so we can remind students um, at different times uh, the expectations in place. Over here is when the students arrive, they will grab their arrival icon off of their schedule and bring it over to arrival, right here to the matching larger icon. And then the students will um, put their attendance and their lunch menu choices here and then put their things away within the arrival closet. Um, over here, we have a bathroom, also with the icon here to match, and so students can um, obviously independently request bathroom or um, use an icon, or it's scheduled within the day in their individual schedule. And then this area is used for earned um, choice time, um, any motor lab, any breaks um, that are for fun, and um, when the students are in a calm um, state or have also been rewarded. Um, you can see a lot of sensory and motor materials in here. Also with the reminder that the expectations are still in place um, even within the choice time environment. So timer is always in play um, to make transitions easier and auditory for the students um, when they're transitioning from their preferred choice activity back to the work area. Each area of the classroom is labeled in a format that is student-friendly. Visual behavior expectations are posted and should be differentiated to meet all students' needs. Materials are well organized within each area of the classroom. Here's another example of how a teacher sets up the physical structure in the classroom. So in this room, which is a highly structured environment, we have different places uh, for instruction here. In the front is our whole group instruction. Uh, this is where we do news to you and, and um, our morning meeting and different uh, things like that. We also have, because this is so structured, everything is labeled. This is where they put their backpacks. Uh, this is where they uh, each child has their own workspace, which is individualized for them with their schedule. We also have a labeled space for the chill zone. Again, again, a place that they can go uh, when they need to just relax. We have our break zone. Again, it's labeled and structured for them that they can use whenever they need to take that break. We have the computer zone, which is labeled for their break time um, or if they have activities that they uh, are going to be working on. So labeled the computer zone in another space that is a small group space and can be utilized uh, for students anytime during the day as well. Listed on this slide are resources available to help with setting up physical structure in the classroom. One example of a resource website for the area of physical structure is the Autism Helper. This link will take you to an article with pictures describing seven steps for setting up a structured learning environment classroom. The second component of an SLE HSC classroom is schedules and work systems. All structured learning environments need class schedules, individual schedules, and a variety of visually structured work systems. The class schedule is posted so students and staff have an understanding of the daily routine. Student schedules are individualized and used consistently with transition markers. 
Watch how this teacher utilizes schedules and work systems. So here is our daily schedule. It's very uh, generic, but yet somewhat specific so the kids can understand. Um, so here's our morning routine. And with these, I also have icons on their uh, specialized schedule, their personal schedule that, re that correlate with these. Um, this just tells us um, our whole day schedule. And um, I just did a generic work skills that kind of covers all, but um, here it's easy for them to follow. And then we have our going home, so they know exactly what they're supposed to do. And it's very predictable, and it's the same thing every single day. Okay, so here's one of the students' workspace. Um, again, along with the general schedule, each child has their own specific individual schedule. I have prepared one that is our morning schedule. Again, you can see the same icons that match the general schedule up on um, the wall. So this is the morning schedule. This is the afternoon schedule. I change them um, when they go to lunch. That just happens to be our, our break between the morning and afternoon because there are a lot of icons and the more icons you give, the more overwhelming it is. So to break it up for, for these students was the best way to go. We also have a first and then as far as this is to help them work. This is our behavior system. When they do their work, they get a star so they know that once they complete their work, fill up all this and it is time for their break. Mini schedules and checklists are individualized and utilized by all students. Work systems are utilized by all students at both work with teacher and independent work areas. Watch how this teacher utilizes the work system at the student's independent work area. I'm going to check my schedule and it says I'm going to workstation next. So I'm going to take my icon and match it to my workstation area. And I see I'm going to get number one. Number one. I'll sit down. Oh, I'm going to make Mr. Clear. Okay, so I finished that work task. I'm going to check that. I'm going to put it in my finished box. And I'm going to move my mark over here to show that that's finished. And now, oh, I have to get number two. Here's number two. So once I've done all my work tasks, I did it, I put it in here. I moved all the way down. Now I'm at number five. I did number five. And all of these um, activities that are in the individual workstation, are um, activities that a student can do independently. So they shouldn't need any prompting assistance um, while they're working. The goal at the individual workstation is to um, build independence and be able to follow a system. So I did number five. I marked that finished. Oh, look. I earned a So point. if you're at um, an individual workstation and um, you're working on a student learning that system um, and they're not able to do five tasks, that's perfectly fine. Um, you should set it up so that you can have as many tasks as the child is capable of doing without frustration um, and then build upon how many tasks those are or the difficulty of the tasks. So with this system, um, it's easy with a strip of, uh, with a strip of Velcro um, and enough space to either add on or subtract the number of tasks the students respond. Listed on this slide are resources available when creating individual schedules for each student. One example of a resource website for the area of schedules and work systems is the Autism Helper. This link will take you to an article with pictures describing eight types of visual schedules. The third component of an SLE HSC classroom is social skills. All structured learning environments need to include the direct instruction and practice of social skills. Social skills strategies are developed to meet specific needs of students. Some examples of teaching social skills include social narratives, power cards, feelings charts, goal setting, video modeling, cartooning, scripting, and task analysis. 
Social skills should be taught deliberately to students based on their IEP goals and should include a variety of practice and reinforcement of the use of these skills. Listed on this slide are resources available when planning social skills instruction. One example of a resource website for the area of social skills includes a variety of already made social narratives. This link will give you examples of social narratives on topics including calming down, communicating, emotions, fire drills, following rules, honoring personal space, and riding the bus. The fourth component of an SLE HSC classroom is applied behavior analysis. All structured learning environments should be built and run on the principles of ABA. In order to change problem behavior, we must understand the function of that behavior or the reason why students engage in that behavior. Principles of behavior tell us that all behavior occurs for a reason, that behaviors are learned, and that behaviors are a form of communication of students' needs and feelings. Many years of research in ABA tells us that data should be collected on the antecedents, behavior, and consequences for the prioritized targeted behaviors in the behavior intervention plan. Data are then analyzed to determine the hypothesized function of the problem behavior. Once the function is determined for a problem behavior, we can implement antecedent strategies to prevent behaviors. We can teach replacement behaviors so the students know what to do instead of the problem behavior while still meeting their needs and implement consequence strategies to reinforce appropriate behaviors and respond to problem behaviors. This video clip shows how the teacher uses a chill zone to teach students self-regulation, as well as the use of structure, organization, and routine as an antecedent strategy to prevent problem behavior. Okay, so this is our chill zone. And it's where students can come when they're frustrated, uh, when they've just kind of had enough of me maybe, and they just need a moment to themselves. I have specific directions here that, uh, that can just help them to, to just uh, chill out a little bit before they can come back to work. So um, I, there's blankets here. Some of the kids like to just come in here and throw blankets over themselves and just feel that weight so they can maybe have that pressure that they need. We have a bean bag if they want to do that. We also have a mat that extends and pillows. But it's just basically for kids, like I said, that just need that time. So I went through and I taught them how to use this time. I even have kids that um, I don't even have to prompt anymore. They just come here when they're frustrated. They may be here longer than three minutes, however long it takes for them to get themselves under control and back into the classroom. That's what the chill zone is for. Since many of the students in my classroom have behavior issues and have the need for structure and communication, um, I find it so beneficial that I have their day packed. It is the same thing every single day. It's highly structured. It's very organized. It is very routine every single day. The students know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. They end up telling me sometimes um, when it's time to do things. But because I've scheduled my day like this, it helps with managing behaviors so behaviors um, don't, uh, don't happen throughout the day. So um, being organized, structured, and planned help to de-escalate any students um, throughout the day because they know exactly what's happening. Positive reinforcement systems are individualized for each student, used consistently, revised based on data, and faded over time. Watch this teacher explain some examples of positive behavior supports, such as flip cards, power cards, social narratives, and the first then technique. For the environment, it's important to have a lot of positive um, behavior supports in the form of strong visuals for a student. Um, so these are some examples. Um, one of them is a behavior flip card. Um, and you can wear this on your name tag and have it ready in any environment when you're um, within the school building or campus. Um, and it has different expectations for behavior um, that you can address while you're out. Um, this is a power card. And the idea with this power card is, um, first of all, we made it exciting because we're using a character that the student likes. Um, but the idea is it's telling the expectations to the student um, 
and, the, and you're going to review this with the student before you are walking in the hallway um, to show them what the expectation is. So um, Wally's going to try to, you're going to try to walk in the hallways, stay with my teacher, and touch others gently. Um, when I had a student come to me uh, in the beginning of the school year last year, he definitely required this power card. Um, but as time progressed, he became a successful hallway walker and he no longer needs it. Another example of a um, positive behavior support um, in a visual format is a social story. So um, you can make a social story about any behavior you would like. Um, this one is about happy hands. And the idea is that you make the social story um, state basically what your positive expectations are for the student's behavior that they could be struggling with um, and making the uh, book exciting for the student to look at. So you might include personal pictures of the student doing the things that you want them to do and um, also characters that the student enjoys. Um, and then the idea is that this might be something that you want to read every morning before you start the day. You might want to read it a couple times throughout the day to remind the student. Um, but it should be something that the student does enjoy doing as well. And then this is a first then card. Um, it can also, it's another transition tool that can assist with um, transi transitioning successfully from one activity to the other. Um, a student um, might want to come directly to the classroom when they arrive at school um, on the bus. But uh, this is a reminder to them that we're going to eat breakfast first, and then we're going to go arrive at the classroom. Um, so it's just another visual reminder to let the student know that uh, you're aware of their concern, <laughs> and um, you're addressing it, and what they are looking forward to or um, moving to the next thing is coming. Listed on this slide, are resources available to assist staff with understanding the principles of applied behavior analysis and implementing positive behavior supports. One example of a resource website for the area of ABA is the NEISD Behavior Resources site. This link gives you access to all things behavior, including many examples of behavior strategies. The fifth component of an SLE HSC classroom is effective teams. Watch how the teacher utilizes her paraprofessionals to create an effective team when working with students. The pairs in my classroom are so important to our daily structure. I have designed for them a daily schedule and lesson plan um, so they know exactly where they're supposed to be, they know exactly what they're supposed to be teaching, and um, they are there for a specific purpose. So each, each uh, para is assigned a student for a specific activity or specific time. The lesson plan is uh, located by each of the students' uh, workspace. It tells them exactly how they need to implement that. Of course, all their activities are already picked out um, by myself, but um, the paras come in, they know exactly how to execute every single day. To work as an effective team, teacher and para schedules are posted, adhered to, and revised as students' needs change. The team should engage in a variety of activities including debrief on a daily basis, collect behavior and academic data for progress monitoring, attend appropriate training on ABA, and always assume student competence by engaging in debrief sessions away from all students. Watch the teacher explain how she provides expectations and training to her paraprofessionals. At the beginning of the school year, when I find out who my paras or assistants are going to be for the year, I will um, hand out a document that talks about para expectations, and that could be anything from their interactions with students um, and what I'm expecting, or um, their, their daily existence in the classroom, whether it's about cell phones or something like that. Um, and it's important that they know from the beginning um, what my expectations are, and I know that they know, and I have had that communicated to them. Um, and then throughout the school year, it's really difficult, obviously, to find time to train your parents or assistants. There's no time in the school day, and so it really does become um, like an in-the-moment training session. And so um, in the beginning of the school year, um, especially when you're doing some reinforcer assessments and you're giving kids um, 
time to kind of adjust coming back from the summer. Um, there, there's less work demands, things like that. You might have a little more free time um, when possible, and you can pull a para quickly um, while another para or someone else is watching the kids. It's it's um, important to take those moments to do a little on-job training um, and show them what it is you're, how you're expecting them to interact with the kids, um, the responses to different behaviors, the prompting levels you're giving, um, things like that are, I think those two things are like the main crucial things that um, you need to think about when you are working with Paris, making sure everyone's on the same page because consistency is key. Listed on this slide are additional resources available for all staff members working in the SLE HSC classroom. Some resources can be used as training for effective team building. Other resources include training on best practices when working with students with autism. Any or all resources should be utilized collaboratively with the instructional team. For example, this link provides information on the right of all students to have a way to communicate their wants and needs. The sixth component of an SLE HSC classroom is curriculum and instruction. The curriculum is aligned with grade level TEKS, state assessment concepts, and IEPs. Data are collected and analyzed routinely for each student to effectively monitor progress. Watch as the teacher discusses how she uses a variety of curriculum and instructional materials in her classroom. Curriculum is probably one of the most difficult things that you're going to come across when it comes to um, setting up your structured learning environment and thinking about all the different individual needs of your students. So the district offers a great um, variety of uh, resources for curriculum. The um, difficult part is finding the time and the energy to figure out how to modify those to fit each individual student. So you can do a lot of things to make these materials um, accessible to your students. Um, you can print out books and make accessible books um, based on the topic that you're working on. So, for example, if I'm addressing economics in social studies, um, I have this book about wants and needs. Um, from the Unique Learning Systems curriculum. And I printed it out, laminated it, and put some Velcro pieces. And based on the student's ability, I, had, um, I have them able to use pictures to um, visualize the story as you're reading each page. So um, a basic version of this might look like just, just you're just matching Sue. Um, because Sue's going shopping. And you can utilize different levels of books. Um, you can make it as complicated or as simplified as you'd like it to, to be um, for each student. So that's something you can do um, to make reading materials. Um, along with um, this economics uh, lesson that I was teaching, I also made vocabulary um, in the form of folders because our students like to do folders, or they don't like to do folders. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I used the vocabulary um, from the unit on economics, and um, you can make these folders for vocabulary also as complicated or as simplified as you'd like. It could be matching word to word, it could be matching a word to the picture, or it could be simple like matching picture to picture. Um, you can also program your um, communication devices to include the vocabulary uh, that you're working on for each lesson. Um, like I said, it, it can be time consuming, but um, it's worth it to have the students able to engage in um, the topic and to actually um, be able to participate and learn the material that you're covering. Um, you can use paper to pencil things um, for comprehension with the books, but you can also, um, if a student can't do paper and pencil, you can easily um, make something like this, a flip book, that you're, or just a sheet with Velcro on it, and you laminate um, picture choices, and a student can always make a selection in a field of three. Um, so the real thing is um, being able to take the materials for the topic that you are responsible for teaching and um, be able to modify them um, to an accessible level for each student. <music> 
Teachers routinely communicate progress to parents. Assessment is evident and district curriculum maps are followed. Check out how the teacher organizes her instructional materials in the SLE classroom. Hey, hi, I'm Kim Nelson at Eisenhower Middle School, and these are our work folders that we have. Um, they are labeled per subject, and I have to honestly say that when I came here, um, this is my first year teaching SLE, and I had nothing. I had nothing to start with, so I had to be very creative and uh, started with just Google images and trying to create folders that align with the teaks. And then thankfully, I came across Rethink, and so that has greatly helped me. So um, so here, I just went ahead, and we have tons of folders. They align with the teaks. Um, they, like I said, are, are from Rethink. They're also specific to each child's IEP goals. And so what I've done, so these are just the general ones for all of the, uh, the curriculum, the different specific subjects. And then here, they are very specific to each student and their goals. And so it's easy for me, as I am collecting data, just to pull these and uh, throughout the week, along with all the other um, ones with the curriculum and uh, collect my data and serve the students like I'm supposed to. Communication with parents is so important it, uh, for me, and especially in the SLE room. So I communicate, the, communicate with them daily through uh, a take home folder. And you know, I started off telling my parents that we are a team. It's not me alone. It's not the parents alone, but we come together, we collaborate together, we communicate together, and we team together for their students' education. And so every day I, I communicate how they're doing with behavior. Um, things that they've done uh, throughout the day. And so I love communicating positive things. So I will communicate with parents positive things and we celebrate those little things, baby steps. We celebrate baby steps. So communication is huge for my students. Lesson plans are aligned with grade level TEKS and IEPs. They include differentiated instructional strategies. Instructional and assistive technology is integrated throughout the school day, and each student has an opportunity to access non-disabled peers as appropriate. Listed on this slide are resources available when planning curriculum and instruction. The NEISD Special Education website has a link to curriculum maps to guide teachers with curriculum and instruction. The final component of an SLE HSC classroom is communication. Staff utilize visual cues when communicating with students and implement communication systems so students can appropriately express their wants and needs. They collaborate with the SLP to determine the most appropriate communication method for each student. Communication attempts are honored and goals are integrated throughout the school day. Watch how the teacher uses communication systems with her students. So we have various ways of communication in my classroom that the students um, are able to communicate and tell us what they need and their wants. And I have one student that does the pro loquo to go, and she's able to tell me exactly what she wants, the restroom, her break, specifically on her break, what do you want to do? Computer. Oh, the computer. What do you want to do? Nemo, Barney, Elmo, all those things are very specific for her. I have another student who um, uses the textbook, and hers is a lot more simpler. After her work time, she will pick just from three activities. And I have to tell you, usually it's the same activity. She likes the iPad. But this is the way she communicates. She puts something here and she specifically gives it to me. So this is her mode of um, communication. I also have another student who uses the textbook as well. A little bit more choices. And as you can see, that these pictures are a little larger than the other student. Again, individualized for the student. Um, needs the bigger, uh, bigger pictures. And he specifically has an I want strip. He chooses from just the front. It didn't work to, uh, to put more inside. It was just too overwhelming for the student. Um, so we kept just the front and he picks that up and he has to actually take that over to the computer. This is of course after he's worked. Take it over to the computer, put it on there, and he tells us what he would like to do. Some examples of communication systems include voice output devices, picture exchange, and choice boards. Here is another example of a teacher incorporating communication systems in her classroom. Students in structured learning environments can come to you with very different um, forms of communication. Some students could be verbal. A lot of the times you will have students who are nonverbal. 
Um, students who are nonverbal might have a voice output device like an iPad. Um, and one of the most um, familiar programs on the iPad for communication that we use is Proloquo to Go. Um, and the students can select what it is that they want or need on their um, iPad to communicate with you. Um, students who do not have a communication system in place tend to show a lot more frustration and um, aggressive behaviors, so it is important that you figure out, once you get a student, what kind of communication system um, you can put in place for them. It might be something really basic, like picture symbols. Um, and this is an example of using text to indicate what kind of supplies you need during a school activity. Um, something basic like this, or even with basic needs like bathroom, food, go home, whatever, um, is important just to put in place to help your student know that um, they have some way to have their voice heard. Listed on this slide are resources available to assist in the development of communication systems for students. One resource is the Considerate Classroom. The goal of utilizing all the critical components of a structured learning environment with consistency and fidelity is to help the students gain skills they need to transition back to their home campus and a lesser restrictive environment. This can occur when the student is able to demonstrate skills and behaviors necessary to function in a larger group setting with fewer staff. Data show that reasonable progress has been made and maintained over a period of time. Watch the teacher discuss next steps for students in the structured learning environment. The purpose of a structured learning environment is really to get the students ready to be able to exist in a less restrictive environment like ALE. Um, so the idea is that as the students become more successful um, with their independence, with um, their behaviors being under control, that you can start including them in other environments. So that could look like um, small transition times into the ALE environment to get them used to more people and less adult support. But also, um, you can start trying to include them in general ed environments where it is appropriate. So some examples would be lunch. Um, obviously, your staff would all go with them as well, but that's a good um, time to expose them to general ed peers. Also, recess. Um, if they don't need to be um, in an enclosed um, area or if they're not a danger to other students, that would be a good time to include them, especially because it'll be a preferred activity for a lot of them. And then also maybe something like music, if they do enjoy music um, class, that would be somewhere where they could be included, especially also if they don't have adaptive PE, they could, um, you could look at including them in PE class. The transition from this highly structured and restrictive environment should occur when the student is able to follow directives with less intensive prompts and should begin gradually at the SLE campus. Watch the teacher discuss a student who is gradually transitioning to a less restrictive environment on the SLE campus. Okay, so here's a student uh, who is very independent in this room. He has a different work schedule than all the others doesn't need a one-on-one -on -one for, uh, for teachable moments. And so here are his, uh, his work. Again, they're in bin, so uh, we have science and we have language arts, other things that go along with those subjects. When he is finished with this particular um, activity, he will take his one that is down here and he will place it here. When he is finished with this activity, he will then place it in his bucket. And uh, he knows the schedule very well. He'll do the same thing for uh, two through five. When he's finished, he'll put his stop. And then he has his right here in the schedule. He has progressed well enough that he knows it. He doesn't actually have to use the icons like some of the others, which then leads me to believe that he is doing so well. His behaviors are under control. Um, his work, he's working independently. He's one of my kids who is getting ready to transition out of SLE and to go into ALE. He is now out about three hours during the day. He uh, has been transitioning to an ALE class for their morning meeting. He also goes out for hospitality class and an art class, and he's doing phenomenally. Um, he has uh, an assistant that goes with him. He's doing awesome. We are so happy that he is becoming independent, and I know he's gonna do wonderful next year. Check out some tips 
for the teacher of SLE HSC. Running a structured learning environment can seem overwhelming at first when you're starting out a school year, um, but it's really important to remember uh, that all the effort that you're putting in in the beginning um, will pay off in the end, so it's really important to um, front load all of the, the layers that are important to prevent um, your classroom from falling apart. <laughs> Uh, so things like individual schedules, behavior management systems, um, like a token economy, uh, communication systems, things that um, are proactive about preventing um, inappropriate or undesired behaviors um, are essential. And so it can be very time consuming and overwhelming um, to try to think about every student and every situation. Um, but the idea is that you're going to put in a basic layer of um, expectations and, and supports for your students um, in the beginning, and then it will pay off um, in the end. Uh, as far as um, making materials and things like that, that can seem very overwhelming as, as well. It does take a lot of time. Um, time management is key. And um, really, you really have to be able to prioritize. Um, and just remember, like, you're doing this for your students. Um, this, this, is, this could take them, like, leaps and bounds from where they are in the beginning. And it's, it's exciting when you think of it that way, that um, you're doing this for them. Um, and, and, and you're helping them really um, give them a foundation for a successful school career. Thank you for taking the time to build a quality program for students with significant needs for structure and support.